newspapers and look for clubs that are advertising live music. They send their, their spies in there and they take notes and stuff and they drink. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I mean, that'd be pretty boring. No, they really do this. In fact, a lot of times they will even hire, from what I've read, they'll even hire local people like uh, music teachers, you know, to go to these clubs and check them out. But that's how they, they catch them. And the thing that pisses me off beyond belief is, okay, the club owner tells the band, no cover. Sign this agreement that you will only play your own original music. Well, the club owner just hung himself because if he doesn't know anything about the law, which a lot of them don't, they don't even know they need a license. Right. If the band plays a cover, they'll say, oh man, you know, that, that's like a $30,000 penalty. But the fact that you had that band sign this document, that means you know about the law. Therefore, we can slap you with a maximum penalty for a willful infringement because you knew and you didn't buy a license. And a willful infringement, the penalty goes up to $150,000 per song. Wow, crazy. Yeah, that's in the U.S., $150,000 per song. Yeah, it's scary. It is damn scary. <laughs> Rob, your thoughts? Well, I think the whole system's just crazy, actually. I mean, you know, people are just out to try and make a buck, especially mm -hmm. the indie artists. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I can understand the, the role of ASCAP and BMI oh, to too. protect the music. You know, if, if Rob is sitting there watching TV... And Rob's not an ASCAP member, but if he was, right. and he's sitting there watching a movie on TV, and he's hearing Out for Blood in this movie, hell yeah! Yeah! ASCAP BMI better uh, be shaking them down for the royalties. Right. But, then again, you know, Rob wants airplay on the internet, so he puts his song under Creative Commons. His song is not, but we're just saying. This is a make-believe yeah, scenario. Yeah, just an example. Yeah. But he puts it under Creative Commons. Well, oh my. That's wrong. Doing that will make the music die. Well, what it boils down to is the, the, art, the artist having the right to do what they want with their music. Mm -hmm. And ASCAP is trying to say, no, no, you're going to do what we want with your music. Yeah, because it is our music, according to ASCAP. Everything in that letter talked about our music. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, when the hell did ASCAP start writing music? Well, you know, what's really funny is that, I've, uh, you know, from what I've seen, this really pissed off a lot of musicians who, you know, they don't understand it when we try to explain it to them when they come to us for airplay, um, how much control ASCAP will claim over their music. And it's really interesting as they get this letter from ASCAP. I think this is a wake-up call to a lot of these folks. Well, a lot of them, too, when I ask them to give me a waiver, they freak out. You want me to sign something? Oh, my God. Well, yeah, I do, because you, you signed something with them. Right. You gave well, them the authority <laughs> to sue my ass and take me for everything I own and everything I will ever own. You when know? I first... When I first met you, Deb, I was a little leery myself because anytime yeah. somebody wants you to sign something over, yes, in yes, you know, well, music. not really sign over, but what I mean is, you know, a contract. Yeah. Uh, that's why I, I really read it carefully before I signed it, and, then and I'm glad you did. You, I realized yeah. you were okay. Yeah, well, you know, that's why, you know, uh, you know, what I blame that on, Rob, is, is, you know, nothing else other than how screwed up, how totally fucked the music industry is. Based well, on like the you said, you got to be cautious. Exactly. Oh, exactly. yeah, you do. Hell and yeah, And the musicians you do. know that. And when you ask them to sign something, it freaks them out. Mm -hmm. But because of, you know, BMI, ASCAP, I have to do this to protect myself. And an email, according to the, the entertainment attorney I talked to, sending me an email saying, will you please, please, please play my music on your show? Well, that does not give me permission to play their music. It has to be 
it can be written on a, on a piece of toilet paper, but it has to be a signed agreement, according to this attorney. So, yeah. I have to ask, Deb, do you have any waivers signed on toilet paper? Um, <clears throat> no, I was planning on getting one for Pete Berwick when I meet him in person. <laughs> <laughs> He would be the first. Okay. Yeah, I just it, had to ask. We put it on paper. You have a real yeah, dilemma if you run low, eh? <laughs> I just have to back off on how many musicians I bring on. <laughs> <laughs> At least till I go to the store. Mike, maybe it was. <laughs> oh, this just really freaks me out. And this stuff about, you know, Putting music under Creative Commons will make the music dry up. I don't get it. I just don't understand the logic there. Well, you know, it's a, it's a big scare tactic. Yeah, because they're scared because, you know, they, they saw this and they see musicians using it. And they said, oh my god, this can't be. This will eventually cut into our profit margin. We'd have to give up this fancy office here on Fifth Avenue. Have to go downtown yeah, towards bloody into, Harlem. It will cut into their profit margin, even though exactly. they are not profit. Exactly. They don't make profit. Yeah, bullshit. They make you profit. You spend the hell out of it so you don't make a profit, okay? Right. And, you know, and, and, and the biggies are the ones that always win, you know, when it <laughs> comes to this stuff, okay? Because... You know, they, it's like they're going to take care of their biggest money makers. And the little guy, yeah, he's lucky if he gets seven cents. Well, that's well you know, their, their position is to try and spin it to make the artist think exactly, that they're actually Kevin. going to bat for them. And that's, you know, it's totally the opposite. They're, they're yeah. just trying to spam money for themselves, of course. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, a lot of these guys, BMI and ASCAP, to my knowledge, doesn't get them airplay on regular radio. And... It shows like this, where the artists have the opportunity to be heard. I hate well, saying, that's that's I hate mafia, saying that too. That's we got to think of some other it. way for for the, for the music to be played. We can't keep saying "be heard." He might show up. But, but um, <laughs> that that picture there that Jack had up of the the music mafia, the mob. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Back right after I, I started broadcasting the show, the Unsigned Musician show. Um, we were featured on Blog Talk Radio for like nine consecutive months. Uh, we had a nice audience over there. We were also broadcasting on another uh, site called You Broadcast, mm -hmm. and we held the number one position daily and weekly on their charts. Our show was number one, and mm -hmm. I found out about all this this crap with BMI ASCAP because I actually got to talk with a guy who worked with ASCAP or uh, BMI. Yeah, he was a BMI guy, wasn't he? Yeah, BMI. So Well Deb, remember I, the I, horror stories you told us about that them selling dead people? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Well the homeless the woman, woman at home at her TV yeah. on. Yeah, well I pulled the plug on both shows and started over from scratch. But that's when that little poster there of the mob came to be because J.D. Stagel and I, we were talking. I mean, we were trying to figure out how we could get the show back on. And um, we came up with the mob, the mothers of broadcasting. Right. But Don't get that, busted that was by actually the mob. Here it is. I got it up on the screen right now. Creation of uh, J.D.'s and mine. The mob. But, yeah, there are articles on the Internet about BMI and ASCAP um, filing. No, no, no. That was RIAA. That was RIAA doing that shit. But, but BMI and ASCAP shaking down. Well, okay, let's talk about the story of Richard Hayes Phillips. Oh, God. <laughs> Got busted playing his own fucking music. Yeah. Got they in went trouble out. for playing his own music. That was BMI. That was How BMI. How that happen? Well, they go into the to the. It was a restaurant in New York, real nice restaurant. Um, Richard said it was the best paying job he ever had playing music, okay. and they approached the owners of the restaurant and started shaking them down. And Richard said, "But I'm playing my own music," and they said, uh, "Well, according to what he said." 
They told him that they 